Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. And today we're going to go over uh, this upcoming week. We're talking about uh, August 7 to, uh, we'll, I will discuss until August uh, 14. This is a very important uh, week because this uh, week uh, we're going to continue work on the 40 days between the day, um, the full moon. If you remember, I made a video on full moon. And then this is what's very, very important full moon. It's uh, one of the most important cosmic, uh, positive cosmic opening. It's called Tu uh, uh, 15 of Av. And it's the day which is, uh, we open our hearts to understand what is really love and why we actually came to this dimension in the first place, to be like a creator, to open our hearts and to understand how to love other but first how to love yourself now if you remember i mentioned we're entering to 40 days before day of creation which is 25th of elul in the gregorian calendar in the sun calendar it's going to be on september 11 so we have really important work to do because this 14 days between uh full moon which is 15 day of of and the 25th day of Elul, the day of creation. This is the 14 days given to us before we burn, before we come actually to our mother womb. Uh, the decision made in upper level, uh, according to Arya Kadosh, the one of the biggest Kabbalists ever, uh, you know, live in this dimension, who provides a lot of secrets information about incarnation, what really souls going uh, through before the descendant in this dimension and as well after leave this world what's happened really with the soul uh, after it's leaving this physical body so just to refresh your memory why it's extremely important week as well because we have so many planets in retrograde and most important we have a venus the planet which is helping us to understand the love and um and perhaps the illusion of love as well so Venus starting had retrograde. So we uh, this week extremely important to really understand what this relationship represents for us. And just to come back to finish what I was telling you, this 40, 40 days, this is the 40 days when the creator um, determined our destiny for the year to come for our relationship. And interesting enough, the Venus decided to retrograde during this 40 days as well. She's going to finish retrograde before but it's really, really important period. So it's not just uh, I'm providing information for you as a typical sidereal astrology. I'm giving you much deeper understanding and wisdom for us to benefit, to go to the seat, not just what obvious, which is many times what obvious to us, it's an illusion. But what's really, really uh, the essence of it, many times concealed to us in order for us to go extra mile to understand things. And I just want to give us a small story uh, it's um, really a story from the ancient books, which is explain how two women meet, one woman called truth, and another woman called lie. The lie and truth meet together, and uh, they met in a beautiful, beautiful field, and the lie telling to truth, uh, let's walk to the field and see the beauty of everything what around us. And truth agree on it because she can see it's really beautiful and she see the lies telling the truth. It's actually really beautiful. So they walk into the field and they get to a place where the beautiful veil of water. So the lie telling the truth, why don't we jump because it's such a beautiful place just to refresh ourselves. She put her hand inside and she's still in light, continue telling to the truth. You know, the water is so warm and so pleasant. Why don't we swim together? So the truth put her water, uh, put her hand inside and she, she see then, yes, the lie is telling the truth. The water, it's beautiful. It's so refreshing. It's probably going to be so good to swim. So they both undress, left the clothes outside, and jump inside of the water. While the truth was enjoying the water, a lie jumped, a lie jumped out. She took the clothes of the truth, put on herself, and left. When truth came out of the water, she can see the lie left, and she stole her clothes. And she realized she cannot really come out right now because she doesn't feel comfortable to, to go around without clothes. And the lie left with the closing of truth. What we need to understand, uh, what Kabbalists explain, we, have, we live in a world of concealment. It's called Ulama Sheker in Hebrew, the world of lie. 
Why? Because we, with our limited reality, with limited understanding who we are, on top of we judge other people, we think we know who they are or we see. And therefore, each of us need to really go through our own process to understand ourselves with loving eye, with a lot of love while we're going through the transformation. We're not here to cancel anything or to remove. Energy never disappear. There's no coercion in spirituality. It's all about total transformation. This is another week can help us with total transformation. Um, right after this video, I'm going to work on another video about Rahu because Rahu is going to change the degrees and it's going to be extremely important period of time before Rahu is going to change. Rahu is the south, Rahu in Ketu, the south and north nodes, which is really important. And particularly Rahu uh, going to give us another opportunity uh, illusions as well in order for us to understand the to have a clarity and to overcome our tikkun process our own correction what we were, uh, came to work on it so definitely look for this video because it's going to be for 12 signs between now and until middle of october before uh, rahu in keto the south and north nodes in uh, in the uh, sefer yatsera it's called head and uh, tale of the dragon of Leviton. Uh, they're going to change uh, science. It's going to be extremely important because the next few years, uh, 2024, 2025, a lot of souls uh, probably will decide to leave this world, uh, to kind of to leave this world maybe even before time. So we really want to understand what's really um, going to come in front of us. The next few years is going to be challenging, but very liberating. And with uh, knowledge and wisdom, it's going to make a big difference what other people are going through and the people who with knowledge and uh, not just enough to have a knowledge, it's need to become wisdom. And then you have a high responsibility to, to share this knowledge with other people is more as is, is more as possible to save more souls. So let's move on. I'm making video on Tuesday. So Tuesday uh, on October 6th, we can see Moon. Uh, she's in Pisces and uh, she's going to move soon uh, to Aries. I'm going to show you what's happening on Monday. And we can see the Venus already uh, changing her position to uh, Ari, to Leo. And she's gonna, and she's not just in Leo, she's retrograde, right? So when Venus retrograde in Leo, she's more daring. She has a little bit harder time to restrict, especially what comes from her mouth. But in the same time, she's gonna have a lot of desires, a lot of desires for uh, royalty treatment, and as well the high quality of the things, right? Plus we, we have a beautiful Mercury, which is Mercury by end of this month will get, uh, will have retrograde. We have a Mars retrograde, we have a Rahu Ketu retrograde, we have a, a Saturn retrograde, we, have, we basically have a five inner planets retrograde, it's like a 70% of our uh, solar system, uh, uh, for our inner solar system, so it's really important. So, and you know, on uh, August 7, let's move August 7, because a lot of things happening on August 7, let's right away pay attention to Moon, Moon going through conjunction with uh, uh, Rahu. Every time when Moon go into uh, Rahu, you know, Rahu has a lot of desires, but it's illusion of desire. It's almost like uh, Rahu sometimes remind me of Neptune. You know, Neptune, he's the master of illusion, right? It's a master of intuition, if you know how to use your intuition. But for those of us or for people who really disconnect with the soul process, it can create a lot of delusion. So Monday is going to be challenging day, challenging day in a variety of reasons, because this is the day where we really need to put in um, in place a higher level of restrictions, uh, what comes from our mouth, how we see things, and really to control a reactive system. And to control a reactive system is the only way to, to ask for extra help. I encourage you guys to study uh, my video on Anubikoh, the meditation of the ten sphero, of the seven sphirot, the Zeranpin with Malchut. Do not leave home without do this meditation. Uh, this video under each video you can find. Uh, it's uh, my teacher, uh, Kabbalist Raf uh, Burke, always says if you did Anubikoh and you're growing with understanding of Anubikoh, and you're constantly improving, there's no way you're going to have not successful day. It's just not possible, because all the energy of the creation, it's inside Anubikoh. And don't forget to scan the angels. And there's a Kabbalah app 
which is you can have everything in your disposal in your uh, cell phone. And it is well, I do have under my video, I recommend for you to download. I think it's close to maybe $16 a year. It's nothing comparable to what you're getting, right? So I'm not affiliated with Kabbalah Center. I'm just uh, providing you tools which is available and you should know about. So what else happened on that day? You know, Venus enters Cancer on August 7. And uh, with her retrograde period, okay? So she slowly get into the cancer. And, you know, uh, when Venus get into, as well, uh, to cancer, and what we have in cancer, still we have a sun in cancer. Remember, I do not practice Western astrology. It's a derial system, direct sky. So look what's happened here. We have a sun, which is slowly preparing to enter Leo, right? So we're going to have a lot going on because the sun will interact with Rahu the whole month. Because sun, it's a, it's the expansion of energy. It's a desire. He's going to be in his best position in Leo, while Rahu is going to have in the expansion of energy still in Aries. So let's come back to Venus, uh, because the Venus on the on the day, she's gonna uh, almost like um, she's going to be watched by Saturn, even though Saturn on a different degree, but it's still uh, in the, uh, you know, Saturn always communicate with Venus. So definitely check your uh, Saturn and see uh, in what degree you do, what do you have in any, de in the Aquarius degree from 12, 11, 13 degree, very important. So you can, you, you need to check this in your chart as well. And you understand what I'm talking about because the Saturn definitely gonna, uh, you know, provide, so to say, the platform for all of us to go through some challenge, but this is necessary challenge. If, for example, Rahu provide us uh, illusion of things, he's going to give us, for example, you know, you, let's just hypothetically speaking, let's say you dream about uh, diamond ring okay you're gonna get diamond ring but in the end you're not gonna end up with this person so this diamond ring gonna remind you of something not really pleasant while you you don't want to throw it away and you don't you can wear it you understand this is rahu and rahu is going to be really really challenging us uh, so we need to be prepared again i'm going i'm working on the video for 12 sides definitely look for it uh let's go further let's go to um august 8 okay so now we have uh, Venus in 29 degree. And what important, we have Moon. She already moved from Rahu and she's in Aries. And she's right now in conjunction with uh, Jupiter. Now, what's happened here? I will tell you with Venus. Because Venus in Aries in general, she's not always feel the best. But uh, she's going to have a comfort definitely coming from uh, Jupiter. And, you know... We if we already start to feel the energy because next day Uranus gonna square Venus in exactly 29 degrees. What we're really challenging about this 29 degrees? We're talking about transformation from uh you know from water to to fire and from fire to water, it's always difficult because it's the clash of a class of energy. It's like a short circuit, right? So we kind of can uh, feel this. So let's go on August uh, 9. So what we have now, August 9. So move moon already moved to Taurus, which is great. It's going to help us. But look what we have here. We have, we have actually in 20 degree Venus and we have in 20 degrees... Um, uh, Uranus and it's square so this week it's going to be week which is going to suddenly you're going to see things about your partner more intense do not make any decisions do not make any reactive decisions do not start any conversation from place of luck and conflict diplomacy is the key you need to understand where the person coming from, who he is. You cannot, if you look, for example, if you look at the over, overweight person, uh, like for the uh, sake of the comparison, you can ex expect from this person to be a ballerina. You know, it's not really his, uh, you know, but why we expect from certain people behave certain way or to speak certain way if they, it's not in their character, but what you can do in order, if this is in your partnership and you feel you're stuck, you need to uh, open conversation and the art of communication. Extremely, extremely important. And then we have uh, in August 9, at the same time, we have a Jupiter trines Mercury at 20 degree. So you see we have a Jupiter 
and we have a Mercury. Mercury almost in 20 degrees. We're going to uh, move over here. There you go. Uh, on August 10, we actually have a, a complete trine. And it's a very positive, very positive. You know, if you're really planning your day, your week, and you want to have a important meeting and you will you you have a presentation or understood if there's any way for you to have on Thursday because Thursday in general it's positive day in in Kabbalistic calendar very positive there's a lot of support uh on Thursday and uh, so if possible for you because this is the day you can be really have a success to express yourself. Same thing, by the way, in the, uh, in your relationship. If you were thinking what is going to be a good day to communicate is the day because the and look what's happened with moon. Moon going to be touching Aldebaran, um, and it's really, really as well, you know. And it's going to be positive opening. So this is the good day I recommend to use for really important because the whole week it's really tricky. But Thursday is one day can really, really help you with this. Okay. So let's go further. We have August 11th, which is Friday. Now we're entering to the zone of Shabbat is the holy, uh, holy entering of Piyot. And, you know, Shabbat cover everything. So Friday, Friday, it's a good day, you know, with pre uh, preparation for Shabbat. It's a good day to study. If you're cooking, if you prepare, make sure you have a pleasant music, you study. Um you know, really great wisdom in order for you to enter with proper energy. And what we have here, we have a uh, moon in the 27 degree. Um, she's actually in very wealthy degree. You probably will have some ideas and some desires, perhaps connect connect to your financial situation. So this is the day good to put some thoughts, right? And uh, we still have influence by Vin by um, Jupiter and Mercury, even though it's uh, separate in one degree, but it's actually still very, very positive. So definitely use that, okay? So, uh, and uh, thank God, you know, and Uranus still, um, you know, 28 and 27 degree, we still feel it. You know, we'll feel it for the next few days because the Venus will be tri uh, you know, triggered by, by Uranus, especially when it's in, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, square so we need to be aware of that with regards to rahu you know rahu too far from uh, jupiter so we don't really have much support from jupiter to so to say the soft the illusion of rahu but what really important guys uh, for you to really understand what is the lunar nodes first of all what lunar nodes you have in your birth chart natal chart what is the seat of your tikkun process and now, what is the, the transition you need to work? Very, very important. Let's go to Shabbat, uh, which is going to be August 12th. Uh, and we have, um, what we have? We have a moon. She entered your Gemini. When moon in Gemini, she become more cool, more cold, in a sense, less emotion. But she will have a desire to study, to understand, and to share the wisdom. So definitely use Saturday. Saturday is the best day to study. It's, you know, our mind our memory work twice triple better because this is how uh, we receive promise we actually promise to creation then we're going to follow the rules of creation before we ascendance year and the shabbat is the we have uh, the playground for us to use this day very very important okay and sun slowly uh moving from cancer and he already even though he's still in cancer but uh, but but sun slowly start to touch already mouse of Leo, and uh, thank God for Shabbat because you know this combination it's sometimes uh, uh, make people uh, outspoken and they can say things and can regret. Okay, so we are already entering to that and we are going to August thirteen, which is Sunday. Sunday we have moon in a uh, heart of uh, Castor, it's actually touching Castor, which is the uh, the uh, righteous Gemini, okay? And the righteous Gemini, 22 degrees, it's really excellent degrees. It's uh, it's the degree of wisdom. It's going to really, really help us uh, on Sunday as well. It's a, it's a good day for friendship, for communication. It's a good day uh, for you to invite guests to home as well. But of course, Sh Shabbat is the best. It's definitely right. What else else we have? Well, we have here. Uh, we have here. Um, well, we have here. Look at the Mars and um, Mercury. They only within three degrees of each other, right? 
and mercury end of the month is going to retrograde so whatever you plan definitely uh do all your plans for traveling and everything now because by end of the month uh, i think on 27 i'm going to make separate video mercury i'm going to retrograde but again mercury retrograde always to remind you it's not uh scary at all it's happened three to four times uh, a year and 75 percent of people born with mercury retrograde is the normal normal way to live you know just to do our homework and to double homework while it's retrograde okay guys i think it's all for now if you have any questions you're welcome to uh to send to send me email i always love to hear from you and with regards to anna Bekoch, please make sure before you leave home Use the tools was provided to us by creation, okay? I wish you many blessings and all the best. Kol Tov. Bye-bye. In chapter 2 we read, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, The children of Israel shall pitch by their fathers' houses, every man with his own standard, according to the ensigns. Now for someone who is involved in astrology, at least the second two words will have a great deal of significance. You know about houses in charts. You know about signs of the zodiac. And so once you immediately translate correctly, we are not corrupting the word because otot means signs. And leveta votam, your father's house, meaning houses as there are houses in the study of astrology. On a very general basis, everything mentioned in chapter two of Numbers deals specifically with the aspect of astrology and what all the signs mean. There are 12 months. You will notice that each section of the 12 months from a Kabbalistic astrological point of view, why are there Four, the four represent the tetragrammaton, the most powerful channel by which we can control the cosmos. In fact, it's the only way you can control the cosmos. If we're referring to uh, rising above the influences of the, of the uh, planets, if we're discussing rising above the influences of the signs of the zodiac, you must, as we will shortly learn again in the Zohar, you must have this kavana. You must, kivun means you must know the structure of the universe because as long as you do not know the structure of the universe, you cannot connect to these energy intelligences because they are there for your bidding. To that extent, they are there for you to control them. They were only created, as it says in Genesis 2. Nothing moved. The plants were fossilized. Animals didn't move. The heavens didn't move. There was no rain. Nothing. The sun didn't shine. The moment man appeared, everything started moving. Why? To indicate to us that man is, in truth, the center of the universe, and he controls not only his own destiny, which he doesn't control for most people, but that he can also control the entire universe. The entire universe.